Good Friday morning, everybody. I'm Tommy O'Brien coming to you live from TFNN just after 9 a.m. Eastern time as we got 24 minutes to go until the start of trading and you got markets accelerating higher. We got some decent retail sales out this morning. A lot of news this week kicking off earnings week. We got the banks out. We have City out. We got Wells Fargo out. We'll kick it off of the markets. S&P's up almost 1.2 percent. How about getting back to basically right where we are? prior to the Wednesday CPI data that comes out at 8.30 in the morning on Wednesday. You back it up, we're right there, folks. 38, 37 in the S&Ps, you're up by 1.2%, and you're a solid 115 points off the lows that we had less than 24 hours ago. How about that for some volatility? NASDAQ 100, you're above where we came into the CPI number. You're actually just coming into the peak that we got right after that number. NASDAQ 100, you're approaching 450 points off of the lows we had basically almost yesterday. You're a solid 400 plus points off of where you were at 10 in the morning on yesterday just in 24 hours. The Dow inching towards 31,000. That's a solid 900 points off of yesterday's low. Again, the Dow back to almost right where you were prior to those CPI numbers. Quite the volatility in both directions, and we just right end up back to where we were prior to Wednesday's action. You talk about 48 hours of volatility in both directions. And then we have the Russell, up almost a full percent, almost back to that area as well. Bitcoin, catching a little bit of a lifeline. We were under 19,000. 48 hours ago, and we're back above 21,000 right now. Bitcoin, 21,065. Crude catches a little bit of a bid. How about that acceleration yesterday? We almost got an 89 handle as I was wrapping up the program. I mean, look at this hour that I was on the air yesterday. You had crude kick off the program with a 95 handle, and you traded down $5 over the course of the hour. But guess what? By 2.30, you were back to 97, and this morning, we just hit 99. President Biden in Saudi Arabia, no deal out of there. Maybe that was the optimism yesterday. Uh, no details, no deal at all yet. Oil rises. We're back to almost 100 bucks right now. Crude, uh, excuse me, that was crude. Gold, flat at 1706. Been a tough week for gold. Gold, not quite back to those levels that you're talking about before the CPI data on Wednesday. Gold trading at 1706. We jumped to silver, up about 42 pennies. Check out the slide in silver right from the Wednesday spike you're talking about from 1940 almost down to 1801 we're back to 1864 in the price of silver right now and we jump to notes and bonds where are we there we are you got the 10-year almost right back to where we were before the CPI print as well right you got a 10-year yield right now 2.95 percent the 10-year positive by three ticks on the session although putting this on a minute chart a little bit of a drop off there 857 in the morning we were trading at 128 you just dropped almost 10 full ticks folks in the last 12 minutes it's going to be an interesting friday in these markets after quite a volatile week and we jump over to the vix volatility index today vix i mean look at this action man vix well below where we were coming into wednesday at the end of the day and you're back to below we're talking about lows up until monday yeah, 2541 as the market seems A-OK -okay right now with everything going on. And let's jump to the news of the morning. Retail sales, top forecast, keeping big Fed rake hike in focus. I mean, what's the deal, right? I thought good economic news tanks the market. Why is it going up? I'm, I'm, I'm pretty much serious, folks. Uh, when we get a strong jobs number, right, all the rhetoric to back things up, okay, this is just, you know, don't be blinded by some of these headlines because – at some point, they're not all correct if they're if they're talking about different deals. Now, going back 10 days, okay, remember, there's Friday's jobs number, okay? A healthy economy is very intimidating to the market right now because the Fed is on such a course for hiking. Now, remember, we got a strong jobs number for non-farm payrolls in the month of June. There's your 830 reaction in the markets. You traded down before you traded back up. But then guess what? This week, I mean, it's all been negative action since this morning. OK, but this morning we had no negative action at all. A strong retail sales number following an inflation print of 9.1 percent should indicate that the market should be expecting some really aggressive hikes. But maybe that's already priced in if we have this market rising from here. I'm not sure. If you have it figured out, give us a call. Let me know. 877-927-6648. It's quite the conversation because you have those competing factors going on, right? How good is the economy? If it's too good while inflation persists, then the Fed can make the argument that we're just going to keep hiking. 
Okay, the reason why the Fed would pause is to not hurt the economy. If you have retail sales and you have jobs, I mean, if you have sales and you have jobs, and I guess you need profits on top of it, so that's going to be a big earnings season. Uh, that is the economy, folks. The stock market price is not the economy. Okay, the economy is jobs, wages, sales. All right, let's get into the retail sales number. The value of overall retail sales purchases increased 1% after an upwardly revised 0.1% decline in May. The figures are not adjusted for inflation. The market was looking for about a 0.9 advance in overall retail sales from a month earlier. So they're not adjusted for prices. The better than expected results indicate that the consumer demand is holding up despite the Federal Reserve policy aimed at tamping it down. Conversation shifts to 75 or 100 basis points. We'll see where we go from there. Uh, but yes, that's the headline number. There it is on CNBC as well. 1% in June, better than the 0.9% estimate. Now, here's the kicker. Those numbers are not adjusted for inflation, and inflation rose 1.3% on a monthly basis, indicating that retail sales were still slightly negative. They're not even keeping up with inflation, but nonetheless, you're talking about a beat of expectation. Okay, uh, Gas stations, online sales, and bars and restaurants, some of the biggest contributors. Gas stations should not be surprising. Uh, bars and restaurants shouldn't be surprising either. We're going to want to get back out for, for the foreseeable future. Um, excluding all autos, the monthly increase also was 1%. So even excluding autos, they really beat, topping the 0.7% estimate. Gas sales rose 3.6% as prices at the pump were about $5 a gallon during the month of June. Bars and restaurants increased 1%. Online sales, 22 Furniture and home store sales up 1.4%. That's kind of surprising in the retail number there. Uh, consumers have been resilient in the face of the highest inflation, yes, yeah, since 1981, and we just posted a print of 9.1%. So debt to after-tax income has been rising, but at 9.5%, well below longer-term levels. I mean, there's a, there's a lot of data in this market the Fed can point to, folks, and say, hey, things are pretty good here, right? We got retail sales up a percent. We got unemployment at 3.6%. We have 1.9 jobs open for every American that is looking for a job and is unemployed right now. We have debt to after-tax income at 9.5%, still well below longer-term levels. Right, and what would be the other side of that? The other side of that would be look at the look at the stock market is tanking, right, folks? Their mandate is full employment and stable prices. We are beyond full employment, and we are not even close to stable prices. Keep it in mind if this data persists. Kind of surprised that we're drifting upwards with a strong retail sales number, a very strong jobs number, and a horrible CPI print. I mean, could it get any worse for the Fed's recipe here, right? Go back one week ago before we got non-farm payrolls at 8.30 in the morning last Friday. If you'd said, what's a kind of a worst case scenario for the Fed right now when you think about where they are, where they need to go? I would say one of the worst cases you could have is that you have the economy just skyrocketing. You have jobs continuing to be added. You have retail sales continuing to beat expectations. And you have inflation coming in hotter than they even think right now when the expectation was 8.8%. All of that happened. Here we are. Stay tuned, folks. We'll be right back. Vista Gold owns and operates the largest undeveloped gold project in Australia, the Mount Todd Gold Project. Vista Gold just completed their feasibility study, resulting in a 7 million ounce gold reserve. Vista Gold has all major permits approved and has retained CIBC capital market assistance in evaluating alternatives and in completing an accretive transaction. Vista Gold trades on the NYSE American and TSX under the ticker symbol VGZ. Vista Gold, executing a strategy to create shareholder value. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. 
First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com. Educating investors. Steve Rhodes started his trading career as a student almost 20 years ago, and the student has now become the master. Steve won the prestigious Timer of the Year Award in 2018 and barely missed that mark again in 2019, finishing at number two for the year. An amazing accomplishment. Steve Rhodes is committed to sharing his techniques and knowledge with anyone who wants to learn, and he shares his vast amount of trading knowledge every day in his Mastering Probability newsletter. Steve's award-winning newsletter, Mastering Probability, is delivered every trading day with updates throughout the afternoon. Sign up for Steve's market newsletter, Mastering Probability, and you'll receive access to seven of Steve's educational webinars absolutely free. At TFNN, all our newsletters come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have absolutely nothing to worry about. Visit TFNN.com and try Mastering Probability 30 days risk-free today. TFNN, education investors. TFNN has launched the Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. Sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders. Just visit the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, folks. We got the S&P right now. You're up 37 points just off the highs. We're trading at 38.30. NASDAQ 100, you're up an even 101 points right now, 11,898. Let's jump around to some of the FANG stocks, see how they're trading. Amazon shares today catching a little bit of a lift. You're up about a buck fifty at 112.20. You jump over to the big dog, Apple. Quite a day for Apple yesterday, and they're extending that today. You're up another dollar or more on Apple. You're pushing 150 at 149.61 for Apple shares. Microsoft really took a hit earlier this week. They rebounded a bit yesterday. They're up a little bit today as well. 255, the price of Microsoft shares. We jump over to Tesla, see how they're trading today. 722, up a bit for Tesla. The Twitter saga, it's going to take some time to play out, man. Twitter trading at 36.87 right now. Yeah, and I imagine that's going to go lower, folks, when that deal does not come in. Because if you take a look at where Twitter is, I believe that's where Musk disclosed the stake on April 4th. You're almost right at that price point. Okay, you're just off of that price point. You're trading at 36 and change right now. You're actually pushing. That's yesterday's close. You're actually up at about 37 right now. Twitter is. Well, you were trading at 38.41 March 31st just prior to the weekend that that stake was disclosed in Twitter. Now, the reason why I bring that up is because we're talking about, let's see, April 1st and April 4th, right? That was the weekend, yeah. Where was the S&P trading at that time? Keep this in mind if you're trading Twitter, folks. Okay. My goodness, look at that. I didn't even realize it was that high. S&P was trading at 4,500. S&P right now is trading at 3,800. Can't believe the S&P was at 4,500 on April 1st. What a gift that was, right? Uh, S&P was trading at 4,500. It is 700 plus points below where it was trading. We'll call it 700, all right? We'll call it 700 points below where it was trading at at that time that it was disclosed. Meanwhile, you have Twitter shares only trading down about a couple dollars for a $40 stock. So you got Twitter down 5% over that time. You have the S&P down 15% over that time. And meanwhile, I would argue that Twitter is in a much worse position after Elon has spent months just disparaging that company, okay? So they should probably underperform the S&P. So maybe you're down 20 or 30% from that price point. So to back to Twitter, if you're talking about maybe fair values down about 20 or 30 percent from where you were trading at that time. Here's one more caveat, too. When it was down here in the doldrums, OK, part of the reason it might have gotten a lift is that Elon was in there buying 10 percent of the company without telling anybody. Right. So maybe fair value before you found that out was somewhere around thirty five dollars or thirty six before Elon put a little bit of an inflated bid in there. Nonetheless, if you just take it from 40 bucks, folks, 
Okay, 20% hit would bring it down to 32. That's almost just in line with what the S&P's pulled back to. And if it goes lower than that, which I think it probably should, because Twitter's in a much worse place right now in terms of uh, the beating that it has taken by Elon, and it's become even more politicized. Okay, so maybe you're down to 28. 28 bucks would be a 30% hit when the S&P's down 15. Anyway, keep it on your radar. Pretty remarkable, right? The Twitter's only down a couple dollars from where it was trading at that time. Meanwhile, the S&Ps were trading at 4,500 when that deal was released, and now they're trading at 3,800. And we're off of the lows, too, as we're catching a little bit of a bid today. All right, we have a couple other news items, to say the least. We'll jump over. Empire State Manufacturing. So, New York Manufacturing expands for first time in three months. The Fed Bank's July Business Conditions Index exceeded forecasts. Biggest... Um, Outlook gauge stumbles, though, shows biggest contraction since 2001. So a gauge of New York State manufacturing activity unexpectedly expanded in July for the first time in three months. Although the measure, though a measure of how the industry outlook deteriorated sharply to a more than 21-year low. Pretty oh, interesting divergences everywhere in this market. So the general business conditions index from the Federal Reserve Bank of New York climbed to 11.1 from minus 1.2. A reading above zero indicates growth, and the July figure exceeded all forecasts in the Bloomberg survey of economists. What I will say, though, is that when you take a look at this chart, that's just a lot of volatility going on right now, folks. We got negative. We got positive. We got negative. We got positive. You probably have to take some type of a, of a moving average, but guess what? The outlook, the outlook that's a trend, my friend. Uh, weakest since 2001, as you have the outlook slumping more than 20 points to minus 6.2. I'm not on any, you know, I don't understand all the financial impacts that are considered in this type of an index, but nonetheless, um, a surprise on the short term, but I would pay attention to this outlook because that seems like a trend that is well intact. Meanwhile, taking this one positive reading to indicate positive sentiment, okay, Tough to do when you see how positive turns negative turns positive so quickly recently on a monthly basis with this index. Okay, with that, let's jump to the earnings. City tops profit estimates as the bank benefits from rising interest rates. Boy, uh, not quite the case with Wells Fargo. We'll get to them next. Revenue, $19.6 billion versus $18.2 expected. Earnings per share, $219 versus $1.68. Good headline numbers as they beat. Uh they are trading higher. We'll pull up their chart in a moment. Profit, this was expected, but declining 27% to $4.55 billion or two nineteen dollars a share from $6.19 billion a year earlier. It's these banks, man. Uh, revenue rose a bigger than expected 11% in the quarter to $19.64 billion, more than a billion over the estimate. So good numbers across the board for City. We jump over to City shares. Now, that was yesterday's action, okay? We don't have the 15-minute up there yet. We'll throw it up there, and there's your pop, man. You trade from 44 up to 47 bucks. That's going to be quite a lift for City shares this morning. And before we jump to the Wells Fargo numbers, look at that. They get it all back, basically. Wells Fargo, and they spike lower, and they're actually positive now, getting a lift with the market right now. You get the market up 1% right now, so Wells Fargo, they claw back to be barely in the green. Getting into the Wells Fargo numbers, profit falls. As the bank sets aside funds for bad loans, company shares drop. Well, guess what? They got updated. They're actually positive. Uh, earnings per share, 74 cents, including an eight cents per share impact tied to the impairments. So revenue was just under the estimate. They missed by, I say just under, that's 500 million. They missed by 17.03 versus 17.53 billion. Credit losses to increase from these incredibly low levels. Credit losses to increase. So profit of $3.12 billion, they made $6.04 billion a year earlier. I saw their net interest income out here was a huge miss. I wonder if they cover it in this article. I was reading one piece today that says their net interest income was basically way off what they were thinking about. So the bank's revenue fell 16% to $17.03 billion in the quarter. Half a billion below the estimates. Fees from mortgage banking plummeted to $287 million from $1.3 billion a year earlier. Yeah, mortgage banking, not the business it was a year ago. Uh, divested operations that earned $589 million in that year earlier period. 
So here, higher interest rates did provide a tailwind in the quarter. However, net interest income climbed 16% from a year earlier. All right, I'm going to pull it up because I think they they maybe I maybe I was reading erroneous stuff. If anybody has their net interest income for Wells Fargo, I thought it was a big miss this morning uh, on their numbers. Nonetheless, you got them basically trading somewhat flat at this market. Look at this. We're coming into the open, folks. We're trading higher. This market is just pushing upwards right now at 38.40. I mean, all we're back to, folks, is before the CPI print on Wednesday. And boy, if you told me we were going to get a CPI print of 9.1% infl inflation and we were going to get strong retail sales on Friday, where do you think would market would be? I would not say right where we came into CPI data. Maybe the market's pricing in more than we think. Stay tuned. We'll be right back for the open. In a time of booming inflation where your purchasing power is eroded, there's no better place to protect your hard-earned money than in gold. Mr. Gold's flagship asset is the Mount Todd Gold Project in the Northern Territory of Australia. This is Australia's largest undeveloped gold project. We are talking a world-class gold project in a tier one mining district. This is a large scale, low cost project with significant existing infrastructure in a politically safe and friendly mining jurisdiction. Vista Gold just completed the Mount Todd feasibility study, which resulted in a seven million ounce gold reserve in a 16-year mine life. All of this combined with the approvals of all major operational as well as environmental permits. This distinguishes Mount Todd as an attractive, de-risk part, ready development stage gold project. Vista Gold trades on the New York Stock Exchange under the symbol VGZ. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting tfnn.com. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern for free. Each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, folks. We got markets open right now, and you have an S&P drifting upwards. We're up 1.3% right now, trading at 38.42. You're up 49 points. NASDAQ 100, you're up 1.15% right now, trading at 11,938. You're bumping on the 32,000 door. The Dow just gets above 31,000. Put your 31,000 Dow hat on. 31,082 in the Russell right now, up 26 points. That's 1.5% as well. Crude. Up $2.50 right now, crude trading at 98.26. And folks, if you haven't checked out the Tiger Forex report, come on over to the front page of TFNN. It'll take you two minutes to sign up for this thing. You can lock in 25% savings with the code TEDDY25. 
Okay, Teddy puts out a report every Monday. Great time to sign up over the weekend. You take in this week's report. The archives are up there. We get into next week. He'll put, come out with a report on Monday. Uh, he covers crude. He covers the bond market. He covers many Forex pairings. And if you don't like it, folks, you get a 30-day money-back guarantee. And I guarantee you'll get some value out of that with everything going on in this market, man. Because we got dollar strength. We have action everywhere. And let's jump over. Let's see how we have. Uh, let's see how the euro is trading this morning. Euro US dollar rebounds a bit from parity. We're just over that level right now. One zero zero six three. And the other big one has been the yen, man. Uh, US dollar yen. Easing a bit from the highs of 139.38 yesterday. But boy, you take a look at this thing on a daily. Is that stopping? I talked about it in my program yesterday, right? I think 142 is the A to B, C to D. Maybe it gets there. A point, 115. B point, we'll call it 130 for simple math. It's probably just above that level. But 15 to 130. Okay, so you forget a 15 point A to B leg. You pull back for a C. Now look at this retracement. I mean, you barely got a retracement here. But the moves have been so clean. In terms of one-way move A to B, one-way move B to C, you pull back to the 236. I would have preferred a 3A2 there, but we got a straight line move in the other direction. And 15 off of that low of 126, what are you talking 141? We're, we're almost there. You're within about a point or so of making an A to B, C to D, which is remarkable when you think it's a 15-point leg in the dollar-yen. Just remarkable action. This market's not stopping right now. S&P's up 52 points right now. Let's check in on some of the banks and see how they're trading this morning to kick things off. Wells Fargo, and I'm not sure, look at that acceleration, up 2.5%. I'm not sure that interest income data I had was correct. It was a Lisa Abramowitz tweet this morning is where I found out I saw that. And I can't find that tweet anymore. And she was talking about they were supposed to have something like $10 billion net interest income. They only made a billion. It, it may have been erroneous, so take it for what it's worth. Nonetheless, Wells Fargo up 3%. On their numbers today, I bet City's really going to get a lift. If Wells Fargo is up 3% right now, yeah, look at City up 5.6% right now. We jump around to the banks that already recorded, reported. JP Morgan, barely up, up about 6 tenths percent. Morgan Stanley, up 1.6%. <coughs> Excuse me. BlackRock has their numbers today as well, up about 2%. Let's see how Apple's trading. We're above 150 for Apple. You're up 1.4%. Let's take a look at this on the daily, man. Back it up even further for a weekly. Yeah, bounces right off the 3A2, right? Love the 3A2 and the 618, folks. Even if it's not correct, at least it gives you an area that you can keep on your radar. Uh, all we've done is bounce to that next Fibonacci level. Okay, but Apple catches a nice bounce on the 3A2. We're up from a low. Remarkable that that low, about a month ago, 129, Apple up $20 over that period of time. Folks, that's about $320 billion in market cap Apple's added over that time. Just hard to express the volatility. Microsoft, not so much, not so much the case, right? Trades right through the 382. We've been chopping around under that level for some time now. Microsoft catching a bid today, up 1.3%. Jump over to Amazon shares, up 2.3% right now for Amazon. Let's see how retail's doing on those retail numbers. Walmart catches a bid, up about 7 tenths percent. Target shares up 1.3%, basically up with the market right now. So even though retail sales higher, uh, target up with the S&P about 1.3 percent. Let's see how some of the stocks Macy's up about 2.5 percent right now. Nordstrom's up 2.4 percent. Kohl's up 1.7 percent. Interesting action. Let's see Gap up 1.3 percent. I'd be careful of that one for sure. All right, let's see how the airlines are trading this morning. Uh, some pretty muted action. Delta uh, American up about eight tenths. Delta shares up 1.8 percent. Cruise ships. Catching a little bit of a lift. Carnival up 3.3. Yeah. If you feel like gambling, folks, Mega Millions is $480 million today. You might be uh, have better odds by going buying a Mega Millions ticket than some of these cruise ships. Because I don't think that many people thought that you'd have Carnival chopping around with an eight handle two and a half years after the pandemic. If we come into a recession and people can't spend the money that they maybe, maybe you got retirees, right? Market pulls back. Maybe the S&P pulls back to 3,200. Retirees see uh, a little bit of a hit to their nest egg. Maybe they're not cruising as much. Maybe people are just not cruising as much. Excuse me. Um, they take any hit. They're not going to be able to handle their debt, and it might just be better to go BK, BK, get rid of all that debt, start fresh after the pandemic. Be careful, man. For the longest time, I was thinking... 
cruise ships would be the one, right? We're going to turn the corner. Everyone's going to be back on a cruise ship. I've said with many others. Uh, yeah, old people very susceptible to COVID, man. When you're dealing with certain areas, they love to cruise and cruise ships, man. I'm not taking my family on a cruise ship anytime soon. And guess what, folks? I'm basically doing everything in Florida. Okay, we already had COVID. Um, I got my booster anyway. I probably will get the kids vaccinated. But I'm living my life. But I'm not going on a cruise ship. There's a dividing line that these cruise ships are dealing with right now, and their charts are showing it. And the fact that they are loaded up on debt and the world has not turned that corner yet. I mean, I'll go into a movie theater, man. We went to the aquarium this past weekend, right? It's not like we're wearing masks. So there's a dividing line, folks. Don't separate it out where you say, ah, people just got to get back to life. We are back to life. But you talk about spending three days trapped on a cruise ship with people. That is a different story. All right. Uh, it's a bummer, but they're going to face some headwinds, man, and maybe they just start fresh, and that's the best thing that they can do for themselves. It just might be. All right, what else we got pulled up here? Let's see what we have. Uh, yeah, so this one was interesting about Prime. So they put up some big numbers, man. I personally bought a couple things for Prime. I did. I uh, got sucked into it. It was time. I said, the TVs, man, you almost can't beat the TVs that they had going on. If you bought a Fire HD TV, can't believe. 55-inch TV, 285 bucks, 4K. 55-inch 4K smart TV, 280 bucks, 285 bucks, something like that. Prime Day shoppers buy up diaper snacks as inflation shifts consumer habits. So I guess everybody wasn't buying that. I didn't buy any diapers, actually. Uh, I buy my diapers from Sam's Club. They're a little bit cheaper. Uh, snacks as inflation shifts consumer habits. So let's see. What are they getting into here? So it sold 300 million items, up from 250 million the previous year. The reason why I don't like that statistic is, are you selling are you selling $20, you know, Alexa gadgets to, to get yourself up to 300 million items. But nonetheless, the numbers were big. Total online retail sales in the U.S. during Prime Day event, 11.9 billion, 8.5% higher than overall e-commerce transactions generated last year. Now that's total online retail sales in the U.S. So you got Target catching a little bit of a lift. I bought a, a Keurig from Target. So they got, they got a little bit of action. Uh, I tell you, those red cards, folks, they are a deal and a half. My mom has one, so she was getting, I'll tell you, a Keurig, right? Single cup Keurig was 60 bucks on Amazon. I was thinking to buy it. Well, guess what? Target had the same $60 deal. Well, then you got 5% off with the red card, and they got 10% off any single transaction. So you got 15% off. I paid 52 bucks versus Amazon's 59. We'll finish this conversation. Stay tuned. TFNN has been your trusted source of analysis for bonds, metals, stocks, commodities, and options for years. And we are happy to announce that we are bringing that same caliber of analysis for the Forex market. Teddy Kekstad has 30 plus years of experience in Forex trading, commodity risk management, Forex hedging, volatility, and so much more. Teddy releases his weekly Tiger Forex report every Monday morning with elite coverage of all major currency pairs, including the DXY, Euro Dollar, Pound Dollar, Aussie Dollar, Dollar, dollar yen, dollar Swiss franc, and so much more. Teddy will recommend specific trades when the market presents them and provide updates throughout the week when warranted. For the month of July, inaugural members to the Tiger Forex Report will receive 25% off the monthly subscription for as long as they're subscribed. Just use promo code TEDDY25 to lock in the added savings. This offer is good only for the month of July, so do not miss your opportunity to save on the Tiger Forex Report. TFNN, educating investors. technology around us is changing every day. With so much happening, it can seem impossible to keep up with all the information. David White's investment newsletter, The Technology Insider, is designed to give you all the information you need to understand the technology that shapes today's markets and tomorrow's future. David White has made his living staying on the cutting edge of technology. His weekly newsletter will give you specific recommendations for value tech stocks, as well as entry prices, target prices, and stops to set for each trade. Dave delivers his weekly newsletters every Friday with updates throughout the week. You can get the Technology Insider at TFNN.com for only $37.50. Sign up for David's newsletter, The Technology Insider, and get an inside look at everything the technology sector has to offer. Try it risk-free today with our 30-day money-back guarantee. TFNN, educating investors. 
Will the S&P 500 continue to climb? For bold trades on U.S. large cap stocks in either direction, trade SPXL, SPUU, or SPXS. Direction's daily S&P 500 bull and bear leveraged ETFs. Direction leveraged ETFs. An investor should carefully consider a fund's investment objective, risks, charges, and expenses before investing. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a fund's prospectus and summary prospectus, call 866-476-7523 or visit directioninvestments.com. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold, traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. Welcome back, folks. We got the S&P right now holding pretty well. You're up above 40 points. We'll put this back on a five-minute chart. You see just off the highs we got, approaching 38.50. We're trading right now at 38.34. Back to Amazon shares. We're going to talk a little Prime Day. Amazon up 2.4%. Target shares up 1% right now. So getting into it. So as I mentioned, right, if you do shop at Target, I should get it myself. I'm, I'm, I should listen to my own information, man. The red card, so phenomenal deal, right? So you get 5% off every purchase. Well, automatically, you had Target matching some of Amazon Prime deals. So it's a $60 Keurig. Immediately, I'm saving another three bucks if you just use the Prime, um, the red card. So my mom will buy it. I'll give her the cash back. But then she got 10% off, I think, any single transaction, maybe over those deal days or something like that. So she ended up getting the Keurig for 52 bucks when it was priced on Amazon for a deal day during the during Prime Day for $60, save eight bucks. They got some competition, folks. Now here, some of the information in terms of the numbers. Consumers shunned big ticket items for smaller purchases. So 58% of Prime Day items sold for under $20. Just 5% sold for over $100. 34% of surveyed shoppers said they waited for Prime Day to buy something at a discounted price. 28% passed on a good deal because they didn't view it as a necessity. 28%, folks, you want to pass everything that you don't need as a necessity. Now, did I need a 55-inch TV for the playroom? No, but we have been talking about it for some time. Um, am I going to spend 300 today or 500 tomorrow? I think a lot of people rationalize it that way. If we're going to buy this stuff over the next few months anyway, I might as well do it now. That was me. There it was. Uh, nonetheless, strong numbers over there, but you saw a lift across the board. It was interesting that I said I saw tons of ads for Amazon doing their Prime Day, of course. Didn't see as many ads for like Target. Target had 72 hours of deal days. They actually preempted Prime Day, started a, a day early. Didn't actually see that much on there. Maybe they could have been advertising a little bit more. All right, we jump from retail to streaming. So this will be interesting to see how Netflix's changes go as they try and to uh, rejuvenate their business, you could say. We pull up Netflix shares up 1.3% today. This thing's been a max pain situation, man. You're basically right at the lows from where you were initially how long ago is that yeah you're pushing two months now we've been chopping around at the low 170 160 area so netflix they're going to begin marketing their products a little bit more aggressively so they bought tv ads to tout ryan gosling's new movie now they spent 200 million dollars on this movie one of the biggest budgets they've had the gray man he is an assassin uh let's see he works for the cia or something like that let's see what do they got they were talking about it down here Uh, forgive me. Yeah, here it is. Uh, an assassin for the CIA who becomes a target after he uncovers dark secrets about the organization. Chris Evans, Anna de Armas, eh, a couple other names that I'm struggling with. Uh, Joe and Anthony Russo. So they've done many Marvel movies, produced and directed. So there's a bunch of big names. They spent $200 million to do it. And what they talk about is... They spend $2.5 billion on marketing, but never invested as much per title as it appears in Hollywood. We're all familiar with the millions that Hollywood movies spend when they're marketing their movies. Uh, 
And it looks like Netflix is going to change that scenario. They're, they're going to try and do the same thing. They've ramped up its marketing spend over time and staged large pre-release marketing campaigns for new things such as Stranger Things, Ozark. Uh, movies have started to rise along with production budgets. So Netflix spent upwards of $100 million to produce Red Notice. That was another one that had Ryan Reynolds and The Rock. Uh, they pushed that out a bit. Now they have this one at $200 million. And uh, as they're talking about, you can't spend $150 million on a movie and nobody sees it. I mean, they're looking for change right now, folks, which is good and bad. It's it's good in that, yeah, they probably need some change. The bad part is who knows if it's going to work, you know? Um, they never needed to market these because their business was on basically a dead set path to success. Uh, those movies would pop up within the Netflix platform and by there and thereabouts, it would market itself as being the number one watched movie, Right. Not so much the case anymore. They're going to be shifting things, and they're going to have to. Here's my take on this, okay? They're going to be coming out with an advertising model. If you're running an advertising model, then people aren't paying for that service. It's similar to like Peacock, I believe, right? So what happens if you never even log into the service? Now, I pay for Netflix. I'm incentivized to use that product. Otherwise, I'm wasting money. If I, pay for, if I have Netflix ad-supported, whatever they're going to call it, I have no incentive really to use that service because I'm not paying for it. I don't lose anything if I don't use that service because I'm not paying for it. I'm paying for it when I watch the service and I watch the ads. If that's a service that they're going to start having, they're going to having start having to market that service because why? Because they're going to make money through ads when people watch it, right? It's, it's, it's a subtle shift. But I imagine that the reason why they're going to start marketing those films is they need to bring in people to the ad-supported network where they aren't paying on a monthly basis. And those people aren't going to be pulling up the platform as much as people who are paying for that service. It's a risk to people that own the stock, folks, because there's a lot that could go wrong or right in that scenario. Uh as opposed to when they just have a business plan that they're executing. That's not the case anymore. All right, what else do we have pulled up here? Let's jump around and see how many the, some of the different sectors are trading right now. We have the S&P right now up about 35 points. We take a look at the watch list in terms of where we are, the Dow, everything pretty much green. What do we got? We got financials. We got JP Morgan barely in the red right now. Procter & Gamble barely in the red right now. Coca-Cola barely flat by about three tenths. IBM barely in the green. Boeing, Boeing red. Let's check out Boeing shares. Boeing had quite a little bounce going right now, but you're negative today. They give back some of that. You're down about seven tenths percent. This thing kicked off the week trading at 136. Nonetheless, we're still trading at 146, so not that bad. We jump over to the NASDAQ 100. I imagine everything's going to be green in here. What do we got? Uh, the China stocks are lower. That's about it. JD.com, Pindodo is lower. Baidu is lower. We got a couple of chip stocks. AMAT off by eight tenths percent. Everything else in the green. Look at these pay stocks. PayPal. Uh, maybe they like these bank numbers up 3.4 NVIDIA up 1.5 Amazon 2.5 we talked about Adobe's up 2.1 meta up 2% right now pretty remarkable Facebook still only dealing with a market cap of 436 billion dollars Microsoft up about 1.5 a lot of green on the screen where do you jump to Kraft Heinz a little bit lower the energy stocks a little bit lower even with crude on the rise Let's jump to some of those bank stocks and see how they're trading. Well, we'll jump to the ones with earnings today. Wells Fargo, whoo, man, look at that. Let's, t let's look at this thing on daily. So Wells Fargo is up almost 5% right now. Yeah, this thing's been in some serious pain, man. You're up to 40 bucks, but you were just trading here. <laughs> when? You were just trading here. Is that Tuesday? Yeah, you were just here Tuesday. Wow. Uh, so you're back to where you were on Tuesday. Some strong numbers on Wells Fargo. We jumped to City, even stronger numbers, up 6.5%, but same deal. You're just back to where you were Tuesday. And think about it. All these banks did is they just clawed back the losses that they had because of the bad numbers from J.P. Morgan and Morgan Stanley. Right? J.P. Morgan, well below those levels. I did have a trend line on this chart. I don't know. You could say you're chopping around at that area. Let's extend that to the right. Yeah. Maybe that's the bounce. Our man Bud Rolfs, you break out of the channel, you come back, you test it. This thing keeps testing it. Uh, at some point, it will test it and bounce. We'll see. JP Morgan right now, flat with a positive market. What do we got? 
We got crude up a buck nineteen. We got the gold contract sitting right at seventeen hundred. Tough week for gold. We'll take a look at the dollar index, and we'll talk a little bit of World Series of Poker when we get back as well as they got a final table that's going on live today. I think it starts at about five p.m. Eastern time. We'll talk full poker when we get back. Stay tuned, folks. TFNN has just launched their new trading room, The Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. And now they are expanding the reach with The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. In The Tiger's Den, you can look over the shoulders of Tom O'Brien and the other TFNN hosts while they analyze charts during their live Tiger TV programs and join an interactive trading community with hundreds of members exchanging ideas. Interact with other Tigers and Tigresses as they share trading ideas, news analysis, and discuss the market action all trading day, even at night and on the weekends. The Tiger's Den at Discord is accessible on mobile or tablets as well, so it's always at your reach. To sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders, just visit the front page of TFM. NN.com. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything, from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com. Educating investors. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, folks. And we got the markets drifting a little bit lower right now. You're looking at an S&P only positive by 28 points, but that's some negative action since the market opened. 930, we reach a high of almost 3850. And boom, just like that, we've given up almost 30 points from where you were trading at at that peak high right now. 3822. Uh, NASDAQ giving it up a little bit. You're up 68 points. It's going to be a wild one, folks. The day is young, as our man Basil Chapman would say. He's coming up live next, folks. Don't miss his program. Uh, live programming all day. And we jump to, as I said, World Series of Poker. So I played this $10,000 tournament at one point. I'm trying to remember what year, man. It was probably 2008 or 2009 that I played it. Uh, made it to day three, which was actually like day 10 in real life uh there were about seven or eight thousand people maybe there were six thousand people i think sixty five hundred people the year that i played it i think they were going to pay 650 people and i made it to about 900th place and busted not a good feeling 10 grand but guess what you live once folks and uh, i had made that ten thousand dollars i had my, won my way into that tournament which is how a lot of these people do it for a less buy-in tournament nonetheless they've made the main event 
and they've made the unofficial final table. So you got 10 players left in the main event right now. That is down from 8,663 players. That's almost a record. Uh, the record was something like 2004 or 2005 or 2008. It was when just online poker was exploding at the time. So almost got that level, 8,663 players. Uh, yeah, who knows if I'll play it again. Having a one-year-old right now, a little difficult because it is almost a two-week endeavor, folks. This is technically day seven of the tournament, okay? But they play four day ones, as in there's day one A, B, C, and D because they got to split it up. They can't play 9,000 people the same day. So they got day one A, B, C, D, and then you got day two, day, uh, day two A and day two B is how it goes. But nonetheless, they're playing for $10 million up top, man. Uh, and they're sitting with chip counts. There's your chip leaders. We'll show you, okay, uh, in terms of Espen Jorstad. Now, you got to get lucky, folks. And these players are all phenomenal. But this uh, the guy leading it, he got aces versus ace king with the guy with about 20 people left to double. And guess what? $10 million up top, $6 million for second, $4 million for third. And they're already guaranteed six hundred and seventy-five grand for ten grand. And you can watch that live. There's a service called Poker Go if you want to check it out. It'll be live today at 5 o'clock. Have a great one, folks.